mankind has long been fascinated with the sea. It's a relationship which ebbs and flows, with simultaneous fear and wonder, and this has been translated many times into art. Melville's Moby Dick, Hemingway's The Old Man and the Sea, Rembrandt's Turner, Monet. The sea has enchanted artists from all walks of life for centuries. But then we see this. The Great Wave of Konagawa by Hokusai, and his sea is entirely different. It's both modern and timeless, just as provocative today as it would have been back when it was first created, which was, shockingly, in the early 19th century, around the same time as Eugene Delacroix's Liberty, Leading the People. It's a very sensory artwork. The smell of salt, the contrast of stark white tendrils of sea foam against deep Prussian blue waves, the bitter sting of lashing water. Most powerful of all, though, is the sound. The shouts and screams of the sailors, loud, panicked, yet lost, among the deafening roar of the great wave. Japan and her citizens, perhaps more than any other country, knows the devastation that the sea can bring. As Edmund de Goncourt says, the drawing of the wave is a deification of the sea, made by a painter who lived with the religious terror of the overwhelming ocean, completely surrounding his country. The artwork, though, is not actually centred on the great wave itself. Far in the background, the wave looming over it is Mount Fuji, the centre point of Hokusai's 36 views of Mount Fuji series, of which the Great Wave is a part of. The series itself is a masterpiece. 36 individual perspectives on the titular mountain from all across Japan, at different times of day, in different lights. The Great Wave isn't even a tsunami, as many people think. It's definitely a large wave though, around 10 to 12 metres tall, also known as a rogue wave. The Great Wave was created using Japanese woodblocks, popular during the Edo period of Japan. The final artist's sketch would be taken to a block carver, or horishi, who would delicately lay the sketch on a wooden block, and carve out the image onto it. This would be done for each colour of the final image, and during the process the original sketch would be destroyed. Then a printer, or suishi, would place printing paper on each block consecutively to produce the final image. This method allowed the production of thousands of prints before the woodblocks wore away and had to be remade. The Great Wave was meant to be seen by many. Since its release, it's been reproduced in all kinds of media, from Debussy's La Mer score to a minimalist interpretation for the Quicksilver logo. Hokusai had tried, to lesser success, to paint waves before. The lineage of the Great Wave can be traced back over 30 years though his previous waves never quite captured the essence of duality, the fear and wonder that the great wave brings. They're much bulkier, like cliffs or mountains, and lack the depth, both of colour and structure. The great wave is a culmination of a lifetime of work. Hokusai was in his 70s when he produced it, himself saying it was not until his 70th year that he produced anything of significance. Like many Japanese artists across all mediums, their work is never finished, just more refined. Hokusai, though, had a finite point where he believed he would achieve perfection in his art, at the grand old age of 110. Unfortunately, he never reached that age, but many would argue he achieved perfection some 40 years before. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, here are two more for you. The first is on Jomon, the ancient Japanese pottery featured in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The second is on Kumihimo, the lost Japanese art of braid making.